Jackson uh, from Salt Lake City. It is 3 p.m. and we are ready to move forward and go ahead with this, uh, what we have called the Utah Civil Society Town Hall Meeting. And we will come to you. This has been an incredible journey for quite some time now. And uh, 2019 is upon us, and we need to get going because before too long, we'll be having a wonderful conference here in this thing, Salt Lake City. My name is Baldomero Lago. I am the Chief International Officer at Utah Valley University, and it's a great honor that I have to uh, work uh, along by many individuals and uh, in this endeavor. I would like to introduce my colleague, Annie Davis, from the Salt Lake City mayor's office and the Office of Economic Development that also plays a very important role as we develop uh, this conference. Thank you, Ani, and uh, other individuals that are following us uh, online. Now, for your information, um, I'm saying this to you, and I'm saying those who are following us on, online, uh, there are ways to communicate with us. Um, one of them is via phone, another one is via email, Another one is via Facebook, and another one is via YouTube. So there's plenty means, plenty ways to communicate, and I'll be giving you some of that information. Welcome to 2019, right? Uh -huh. 2019. <laughs> mm -hmm. Turn so with that said, I'm in mind, I would like to remind you, if you could please uh, or turn down your phones or your ringers, or so everyone can actually hear. Scott, can you hear me okay? I yes, hear you. Okay, if you're far away, and... Uh, I'll do my best to speak loud, and uh, let me share with you what a town hall meeting is. Town hall meeting is when we present information. This is where we are, or this is where we have been, this is where we are, and this is where we're heading, okay? And uh, we will love input from anyone as we start building this uh, incredible conference, all right? So, I'm gonna Lovely to have this music in the um, Also, we would like to, um, my colleagues here, and I want to thank all my staff that actually are with us today, Amy Barnett, Carlos, helping us with the video, Veronica, Diana, all those people that work at Utah Valley, uh, they're actually here to support us. Um, so let me start a little bit uh, with uh, perhaps a preamble of why are we here? Right, and uh, how do we come to, to be in this situation right now? Okay, in order to, for you to understand why the United Nations in Salt Lake City, of all things, of all places, right? Utah Valley University is an academic institution as a civil society, became affiliated with the old Department of Public Information last November, actually uh, a year ago last November, in 2017. Um, we did that just for educational purposes. The main idea was for our, for our students to be able to connect somehow with the United Nations, and we have been able to utilize their resources, and our students have been able to attend multiple events at the UN, and uh, in fact, they, they presented uh, some seminars, or actually some messages that the Commission started for women last March. They will be, will be taking another delegation this coming March. We had two students just recently in December that presented um, here in the International Mountain Forum. So UVU as an academic institution has been very active with the United Nations, specifically with the Department of Public Information. Okay. Now as an announcement, I need to tell you that that Department of Public Information changed the name on January 1st. So now it's known as the Department of Global Communication. So you will see both DPI, that's the old name, 2018, now DGC, I guess, Department of Global Communication, starting on January 1st, 2019. And if we have anyone from New York, I welcome them to this town hall meeting here in, in Utah at this point. Um, through, I could, I could share with you for more than an hour what took to, uh, to come to this picture, but the reality is that through a lot of connections and through a lot of paperwork and proposals, we were able to request to the UN DPI office the possibility to host their 68th edition of the what was known at that time, the United Nations NGO DPI <laughs> annual <laughs> event. So non-government organizations, Department of Public Information. 
This organization and this conference has taken place 67 times. So we were requesting the 60th edition to be moved to Salt Lake City. That was a major task because there has never been an event, a conference of this nature, been hosted outside New York headquarters from the United Nations. So uh, you can imagine that we had to do some paperwork, legal affairs and so forth, to be able to bid for this soil, to be able to bring the conference to the state of Utah. Guess what? We did it. And here we are today. And for the first time in the history of the United Nations, there will be a conference housed outside what is known the Blue Zone or the New York headquarters territory, and now is moving to the West. So it is, it is remarkable that we are the partakers of this historic event, not only at the United Nations, but worldwide. Now, individuals will be looking at Salt Lake City, will be looking at Utah for this event. The credit of this undertaken is given wholeheartedly from, my, from the bottom of my heart to a wonderful visionary leader that we have in this community, Mayor Jackie Bistowski from Salt Lake City Mayor's Office, our mayor. She has been visionary. She has had the idea, the support, and the commitment to move forward with this very interesting conference that could be, but we are so excited to, to be able to uh, develop this. Folks, also let me tell you, let me share with you the high level of commitment that we are seeing every day coming from so many different organizations throughout the state of Utah. From the business leaders, from the uh, ecclesiastical leaders, from, from the organizations, non-government, non-profit, from all civil entities, civil societies, from universities, from all different points of life, we have this great supporters that actually are moving forward to uh, helping us to make this a reality and uh, make this event uh, a possibility. This event, or these pictures that you're looking at, is uh, the moment that uh, the US Salt Lake City delegation actually attended the um, annual UN DPI World Conference in August uh, of, two, well actually this was in August 2018, where we bid for um, the city of Salt Lake to host the event. So it was. Can I just add that it yes. was actually uh, kind of comical because we all, when we brought our delegation of folks to New York, we thought we were going to pitch Salt Lake City and to sell our case. And by the end of the conference, they said, "You've impressed us. We're announcing." And they announced that. So that's how, that's how impressed they were with with our delegation and with all the pre work that you know Baltimore had already done. So. So this is kind of a historic moment in this picture right before um, the event. And uh, if you have been at the UN, you probably recognize this location right at the front door. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, some of the great leaders uh, from the state and from the city actually um, help us to uh, make this uh, happen. Um, and uh, on the top, my top left, left corner, you will see me with uh, Mayor Biskupski and also a United Nations uh, officer. His name is Felipe Capo. And Felipe has been extremely instrumental in the development of this uh, conference, thanks to his vision. Uh, he loves Salt Lake City. He has been here many times. And him and I, we became like Don Quixote and Sancho, just, <laughs> just working hard to try to make this happen. And here we are with um, Mayor Biskupski, uh, celebrating the moment of uh, now we have a major responsibility. <laughs> so um, let me tell you what has happened since August. Kind of a calendar of events. What has taken place since that glorious moment or glorious day at the United Nations? On September 20th, <clears throat> the United Nations organized a town hall meeting in New York. Annie and I actually, we participated via Skype or via telephone conference with the folks in, at the UN. Town hall meeting, primarily the idea is, okay, what are we just gonna talk about? What is this conference gonna look like? We agree upon one thing, and the theme was the theme for the conference, which I will present to you in just in a few minutes. We agree that the conference is going to be on one of the uh, sustainable development goals. And from that moment on, now we need to figure out, okay, what are we gonna, how is that thing going to be developed? And that has been the conversation that they have had in New York. So I decided to rally our community and have the same conversation here in Utah so we can balance things. Okay, this is their voice, this is our voice. You folks have a voice. 
in this whole uh, mechanism that we established in this conference. So they had a town hall meeting on September 20th. On October 24th through 26th, uh, Utah Valley University hosted Jeff Brez and Felipe Gable, both officials at the United Nations, at the Office of DPI, and uh, that led to October 27th that we hosted a conference on campus uh, known as the UVU UN NGO DPI Conference, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you love the acronyms mm -hmm. at the UN, right? Mm -hmm. um, many of you actually have recognized your faces. Many of you have participated or attended at that conference, and uh, it was it was remarkable to be able to bring almost 100 NGOs from our community, so at least they are aware of, of what's coming and what's taking place. On November 27th to 28th, uh, we hosted a, the first official technical mission coming from the United Nations. Technical missions are housed or hosted by the city of Salt Lake. So uh, Maher Nasser, that he is the, uh, I don't know the title itself, but I think he's the director of the of the chief. If the UN is listening to me, they're gonna kill me at this one because I should have <laughs> written those names. Uh, Maher Nasser is the, uh, the reports under the secretary general, he is one of the uh, directors of the uh, office of BPI in the old days, the public uh, office. And also Felipe Gapo uh, for, I believe, the second or third time, uh, returned back to Utah to help us uh, to move forward with this um, um, conference. On December 13th, that was just less than a month ago, uh, we had a, an, an additional uh, UN town hall meeting in New York. And again, both Annie and I, we participated at that event, okay? So that is what has mm -hmm. happened since August. And this is what we have a town hall meeting to discuss, to just say, okay, this is, the calendar of events, all right? That's where we are. Now, one of the greatest moments that happened during uh, Mr. Uh, Nasser uh, meeting on Felipe Capo on November 27th, on November 27th, we held a press conference at the Salt Palace in the Salt Lake City. And if you Google United Nations Salt Lake City, you will see a lot of press and a lot of media that took place, and this was probably Break at the moment, starting the, this conference, moving forward, and you see Annie here introducing the panelists. But as you know, and as you look at that picture on the left side, you will see Mr. Ambassador John Price, and then Mayor Biskupski, uh, Annie, and then behind Annie, you will see uh, Mr. Agna Corbett, that is actually sitting here with us. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Corbett, for being with us. Maher Nasser from uh, the United Nations in that picture, and also representing the governor's office. Uh, Mr. Franz Kohl, uh, Director of Diplomacy <coughs> and International Protocol for the State of Utah. And to give everyone in this room <coughs> an idea of the momentum and the interest of this event, uh, we're tracking uh, over about $85,000 of uh, free earned media just covering this announcement. Uh, and that earned media will continue to grow as more things continue to happen. Correct. Then, um, Recently, the United Nations has uh, decided to come up with some visuals for the conference. And for the first time, this is probably all new to you. These visuals are not official as of this moment. Mm -hmm. I'm just sharing them with you. This is a town hall meeting, and I'm saying this is what things may start to look like, okay? I know that um, uh, the United Nations and even our um, chair of communications uh, are tweaking a couple things. I think they're making the skyline of Salt Lake a little lighter, so things will improve. <laughs> and uh, anyhow, but this is just one of the multiple drafts that have been developed uh, as far as coming up with the logo for the conference. But um, one thing that you may automatically realize and see is the topic of the conference or the theme of the conference. The conference was based on the uh, Sustainable Development Number 11, which, as you read, if I can recall, uh, in, in tells with building uh, resilient, sustainable, inclusive, with safe cities and communities. So that was a very long title for the conference. So we all agree that maybe to shrink that title down a little bit and call it Building Inclusive and Sustainable Communities. So that actually aligns with um, Goal 11, uh, but that would be the main theme. And as you can see, I love some of the discourse throughout this conference. Building, inclusivity, sustainability, and communities. Could be urban, could be uh, rural, could be any community 
um, <coughs> family is doing, whatever you want to call it, okay? But the main topic, the, the hard core, is going to be a sustainability, right? That will be the main thing for this conference. And I think what's great about that word sustainable is, you know, it's environmental things, but it's also talking about, you know, how this community and globally we're solving issues, you know, with refugee populations, with homelessness, with, you know, when you, when you think about the word sustainable, that cross covers so many different topics, <coughs> which, which gives us a lot of room. Great. So, this is probably all new to you, but you will, we're going to start seeing this logo more and more. By the way, the United Nations is creating a website at this point that will contain all this information and a lot more information. So the moment that website is ready to go, which by the way, there is already it is a, up. it's it's up, it's now completed. When I say completed with all content information, and uh, but uh, but it's there, all right, and you can just Google it. Um, now let me let me talk to you briefly, and I hope you can see some of these images right here. This is the governing body for the conference. And I know there's been quite a few questions on, on the, okay, who's doing what, how this is being run. So we have, uh, okay, so I won't be able to use this. Um, yeah, but I'm gonna fix it, I'm gonna come up here. We have a conference board for the entire conference. And that is what we call the executive board, which is primarily United Nations and the host city. So please understand that things are done under the United Nations, in collaboration with the host city, the host city being Salt Lake City, okay? So understand that. So you have the conference board, you look at the director, you look at the chief of NGO relations, uh, the director of the outreach division is uh, Mr. Meyer Nasser, we talked about that, the chief NGO relations uh, unit, um, I'm not gonna speak up because I know they're making some decisions at this point. So some of these individuals have now been completely finalized and they will be appointed uh, hopefully by the end of this month, okay? So we're looking for a conference chair. That's something that both the uh, United Nations is looking for a conference chair. From the city, they're looking for a conference chair. So that is uh, what they're looking for at this point. Uh, we have a representative uh, from the host county city government, and that's going to be our mayor, Mayor um, and uh, Mayor Biskupski, as well as the convener. And the convener is going to be probably us as an academic institution, as a civil society that actually can drive the force behind it, okay? Now, we do have a conference planning committee in New York. This is a worldwide event. We're expecting over 100 nations coming to Salt Lake City. Um, we have decided to put a cap. We have to put a cap on how many people can actually attend this event. So and at this point, the cap is 5,000 individuals. The previous conference, probably one of the most successful conferences they, they host, was in South, in South Korea and Seoul, and they host around 3,800 individuals. So we foresee that we're going to surpass that number. Uh, and I think that 5,000 is gonna be a short number. I think we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot more individuals interested in participating in this event. But anyhow, we have to put a cap for financial reasons, and it is a 5,000. So there's a conference planning committee in New York Right, that more or less has a voice internally, domestically, and also globally. And then there is the host. So you see in green, the conference planning committee, some of the things that we'll develop and we'll be working on, but also in the orange section, that is the host committee and the responsibility. Both of us have to work together. Um, the United Nations, anytime they visit with us, they tell us, okay, this is what we're thinking, this is what we're proposing. Provide us with some feedback. And that's why I decided to call this something for you folks to provide the feedback to them, okay? Uh, and vice versa, we'll probably come up with some ideas and we'll be passing along to, um, to the planning committee in New York. Are there any questions at this point <coughs> when it comes to the governance of, the, uh, of this committee, of this conference? Okay, now with that said, um, we have to start somehow. And uh, the mayor decided to organize uh, this city under three committees just for logistical, financial, and communication uh, purposes. And at this point, I don't know if I have a, yes. And at this point, uh, we have um, Mayor Jackie Muskovsky uh, chairing the host city committee, right? And uh, I just 
do it at their executive board because um, Ben Collender that actually works at the city office uh, in the same department as, um, as Annie Davis uh, and I, we honestly, we meet constantly and we are just thinking of, okay, are we gonna move this direction? So we work closely uh, with the mayor's office. Then the mayor appointed three co-chairs. Well, let me tell you real quick about these co-chairs. Scott Beck, regarding the logistics. I don't know if you know Scott Beck. Scott Beck is the CEO for Business Salt Lake. He also oversees Salt Palace, because that will be the venue for this major event, the old Salt Lake Convention Center, right? Um, Scott Beck will run and will work with all the logistics, infrastructure, uh, working even with the airport, with the hotels industry. I mean, once you start bringing all these massive individuals into the city, how that's going to unfold and develop, right? Folks, in order to move this conference forward, we have to have the financial support, right? And uh, we have a very committed community. We have had great support from many entities at this point. But we're still a little short, I would say, very well, halfway there, we're there, to be able to achieve our goal uh, on a budget that is very tangible, very logistic, okay, very, very real, uh, what we're looking at. So, in fact, today we spent over two hours this morning talking to uh, individuals and figure out how we're gonna be able to come up with some funded funds. And let me let me share with you that a lot of the uh, uh, strong key holders and, and companies and individuals and families are coming forward and, uh, and expressing the, the help. The mayor's idea is to be able to fundraise 50% of this event, uh, private funding and 50% public funds. Uh, so we have asked, well, we're asking the legislature also to provide with some Fund for this event. The, uh, as you can imagine, the, the logistics and the financial component is, is pretty large. Um, and then we have uh, Tom Love from Tom Love Communications um, that will be the, um, the chairman for this committee. And Tom Love's responsibility and his team is just to move forward with the marketing, <coughs> the PR, the branding, and everything else, not only in, in the state of Utah, but also nationwide. And he has done a remarkable uh, work already uh, with the press conference. Would you like to say anything about this? No, that's it, yeah. He, he and his team put together the press conference and they'll be charged with continuing to, to get some uh, earned media support and editorial placements really across the country as we continue to move forward. Great. So, um, now there are other additional board members from the community that have decided, have expressed desire, hey, can I help, can I be there, you know, and. Uh, so we have met on a couple occasions, I believe twice already, at the city county building, and uh, we have heard from their input, and there are some of the names that probably you may see there, Ambassador John Price, Luke Kramer, Derek Miller, Miles Hansen, Chris Grant, you know, from, from different corporations and, and locations uh, throughout the community, okay? So now, how did you get involved? Here's a question that everybody say, hey, what can I do? I would love to help. Okay, so the question that I'm gonna share with you is that I need somehow to provide this link to you. There are multiple ways to do this. One of them, if you send me an email to that email, right above it, right above, um, you see it on the screen, and say, I want to get involved, or please send me the link. And I'm gonna show you the link in a few seconds, okay? Then I'll send you the link. Um, we can actually post it in our website at the university, and you can actually download it and use it, right? Yes. If we received an email from you about this event, I assume you'll be sending it to all of us, or do you still need an email from us requesting it? Uh, I think I would probably prefer that if you request it, then I'll send it to you, so I don't bombard anyone's emails. Uh, but uh, let me show you what this link <coughs> looks like, okay? So if I go to the link, uh, which is this link. Yeah. What's the keyword? Google it. Wait. There is no, no way no. for you to Google it. It's a link to a Google. Google. It's a link to a Google Doc. And the moment that you submit, that this information will come to the community, both in New York as well as here. Okay. Now, folks, one of the things that is critical that you understand is that there is a deadline for submission for support, and the deadline is uh, January 19. January 19. Okay, so it's very, it's coming quick, all right? So now, 
when you um, open the link, this is what you will see. Oh, can you see this? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me make this a little larger. Uh, because... So I talked about call for co-chairs, and this is a call for members of the committees, right, and planning subcommittees and so forth. And uh, what you do is you write your email address, you put your name, first name, last, uh, last name, now, if you are 18 through 32, that's what we call a youth <coughs> under the United Nations. And the, the youth will play a very critical and important part throughout this entire conference. In fact, my goal would be to have 50% be represented by NGOs and civil society, and 50% represented by youth. The youth have a strong voice, and uh, I'll, I'll share with you a little further why the youth plays a critical role in this conference. So if you are older than 32, then you just simply say, well, I'm older than 32, don't lie to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Name the organization you represent. That will be your organization, your NGO, whatever community um, association you are. If it's an academic institution, go to university. Are you located in Salt Lake City slash Utah? People have called me already and said, hey, uh, but, but I, I live in Orange. But, Utah. No Salt Lake City, call my Utah, but Salt Lake City slash Utah, okay? So all of you, to my knowledge, reside in Utah, okay? So it says yes, because again, this form is also being filled out, not only in Utah, not only in New York, but in many places around the world, okay? Understand, this is a global event. Now, what would be your preferred role? Yes. Can we mark both? Because not everybody's going to be a coach here, so when you decide... Oh, we don't want to coach here. Doesn't mean we don't want to be part. Precisely. In fact, what I was going to suggest is if you only mark co-chair and you are not selected as co-chair, uh, you by de facto you will be selected as a member. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. So that's now these are the subcommittees that we're looking at. Okay, and you can see the outcome document subcommittee. Okay, let me share with you. Let me give you a little one-on-one uh, -on, -one on, on this conference when it comes to the organization itself and also the, uh, the how the conference it develops. The first thing that happens is that we as a society, we come up with what is known as a concept note. And a concept note in, in legal terms or in other terms is known as a proposal, right? So we decided, hey, this is what we want to accomplish uh, during this conference. And, and we all together make that decision, and we put it on writing, okay? Then we unfold the conference, and we develop all the stages for that conference. At the end of the conference, there is a resolution, and there's a final document that has to be presented, okay? So when we talk about the outcome document, that is the final document. Folks, this conference is critical. It's extremely important for all of us. And the reason being is because less than 30 days after the August 26, 28, 2019, 30 days after, before the General Assembly, there is the World Conference on Climate Change. And the outcome document from the Salt Lake event on sustainability will be presented at that conference, which will, will be led by Secretary General Guterres. So we are playing a very integral part and the development, but this is actually this document on what we're working on here. And the, and the outcome that's gonna take place in Salt Lake City will have an impact in New York before the 193 member states. So it is important that we uh, realize what's happening there. Yes? Not to keep that in, but uh, these are excellent uh, committees, but there's some committees missing, and I guess. <laughs> yes, is there, yes. Any, is there any a little line we can say, how about the blah, blah committee? Uh, I don't think there is, but maybe in the narrative you can indicate that. I know there's going to be other subcommittees. Uh, sub subcommittees, yes. Or even maybe one or two others likely to be out the dark. Correct, yes. These committees were established by the UN. Hmm. Uh -huh. This is what we call the, the main steering committees. So there, we need to make sure that we have a committee that is going to work on the outcome document. There's going to be a round table. There's going to be workshops. They're going to, yeah, but for example, we say, okay, we're going to have a subcommittee on workshops. Well, if we have, and uh, if I recall at the last session in South Korea, they had like 53 different events going on at the conference. Okay, imagine about this. 
So we may have subcommittees. Okay, who's going to take care of family? Some women, some this, some that. So those will be the different subcommittees that will take place. Uh, there's going to be exhibits. There's going to be a large area for exhibits. Hello, the South Palace can host a lot of exhibits there. All right. Uh, there's going to be press and media subcommittees. Right. Probably in, in the city of Salt Lake, come uh, Love as the chairman of the communication committee will oversee that operation. But then we'll need individuals to help us out disseminate this information. We're going to have outreach and give engagement in subcommittees. Right? And then there's going to be a very strong uh, youth uh, subcommittee. Uh, for your information, as part of calendar uh, item, uh, on January 2nd, and that was, I believe, last week, um, I had the great honor to meet with the mayor and all the student body presidents from all public and state, I mean, public and private state universities. In addition to that, we have sent letters to every president for both public and private universities in the state of Utah. In addition to that, I'm having a meeting with all the global uh, chief international officers for all the private and public universities. So the universities will play a significant role as well. But that will be part of the youth subcommittee. See how that works? Again, I'm going to the UN, youth 18 through 32. Does that mean that we're going to dismiss the high schoolers? No. Absolutely not. We'll create events. As you all know, the uh, high school is running a huge program called the Model UN. They're having a major state event in April at the University of Utah. More than 600 high school students are participating in this event. Folks, I hope that they, that vision that they have and that sentiment that they have towards the UN and towards life sustainability, what we're talking about, that can carry on in August at this conference. So I think they are our seeds. They are the future. So those will be some of the uh, uh, committees that we're working on. Then, uh, yeah, I guess I'm you. Um, uh, then we have the question that's been asked, why do you wish to serve as a co-chair member? Okay, and then give an answer. This is not a novel, 250 words. <laughs> Please describe your experience that support your application to serve as co-chair. We may get you know, 50, 20, 100 applications. So I mean, if we don't know you, it will be very difficult for us to make a cohesive uh, decision. So we'll need to find out a little bit more about yourself. So please let us know why you actually want to be one of the leaders. And we'll, we'll take note. We'll create a spreadsheet, and, and we'll put you to work. We'll put you to work, OK? Are there any questions in regards to this application. Yes. Is there a due date on that one? Yes, April, uh, January 19th. Okay. Great. Uh, so <coughs> I think we're coming to the best part of the meeting. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, I guess. So most of us have full time jobs and some other activities, and if we are chosen, member, how big we are going to be? So that, is a good, that is a good question. Maybe that would be an interview process that we'll be asking that question. What kind of commitment and um, any thoughts on this yeah. one? Uh, not yet. No, not yet. And I think, um, I, that, I think that your, your question is extremely valuable. Um, it depends on also your resources, the, the time availability that you have. and. Uh, I know how busy I've been and how busy I'm going to be. Yeah. Uh, so I, I understand the level of commitment. But I don't think this has to be become your full time uh, you know, uh, responsibility right now. I think that we can work. Uh, in fact, today, uh, five of us, we were looking at our phones, like, OK, when is going to be our next meeting? And believe me, uh, we're dealing with very high profile individuals in our community, right? Like, for me to get an appointment with even the mayor. It's like, uh, oh, mayor, I really want you to come with me. And it's like, I don't know if she's going to be able to come, so I have to do the ask. So I, I think things can be negotiated. Yeah. And these these subcommittees will have representatives uh, from our New York counterparts as well, Correct. Um, working on this too. It's not just us. I have a question for this conference. What are the tasks of the outreach and, and engagement subcommittees? Those will be on hold. This will be 
given to us. Because again, okay. there will be a committee in New York. We talk about subcommittees, right? Mm -hmm. Why is sub, why is co-chair so no chair? Because there is a co-chair in New York, there's a co-chair in, in Salt Lake. So they will have to work together. And whatever, because the New York office is going to represent the global office, and we're representing the, the community, right? So, and those, once the sort of committees are organized, mm -hmm. that will be part of the discussion. How do we move forward? Okay. I, I'm just trying to think how our organization fits into yeah, these committees. Yeah, I understand. Okay, thanks. Yes. Council D, I've seen two different sets of dates, uh, 27th to 29th and 26th. The conference, yes, the conference itself is August 26 through 28. Okay. There was a typo somewhere, and that's why the conference is 26 through 28 at Salt Palace. And there may be an additional day, it's called the fourth day, that we may do it on campus, we may do it somewhere, I, I don't know. Sure, okay. Uh, and this is something debatable with the youth community. Great. Um, now. Let's get to the meat of the conference. And this is uh, the critical aspect that we will need your input. And, uh, and let me share with you what has been talked during the previous um, town hall meetings in New York. Again, you're looking at a theme called building inclusive and sustainable communities. And under that theme, this are, there's actually been discussions, you know, develop. And uh, we will see uh, a total of six themes. What I need from you folks, and this is what we have this meeting is, what do we need to add to this list of our conversation? So when we start thinking about, hey, we need to do a workshop on this. We're gonna be calling for papers for this. What areas are we going to introduce in these themes that actually are part of the main umbrella, which is building inclusive and sustainable communities. I just hope that no one comes to us with something off the wall, like, well, why don't we talk about, I don't know, whatever it is, right? <laughs> so the, this is the reality. Now, what the United Nations at this point have mentioned or shared with us is that the six themes are, number one, inclusive communities, leave no one behind. Theme number two is climate change community action. Number three is safe and peaceful societies. Okay, then number, I'll, I'll come back. Now, uh, theme four is gonna be youth. Uh, and the youth committee will come up with their own agenda. Theme number five, we talk about infrastructure and resource use. And theme six, we'll be using emerging technologies. This is not set in stone. Okay, this is, this is nothing that has been finalized. We are brainstorming. We're thinking that we probably should concentrate in these areas. And this is the conversation that has taken place in New York. Okay. And I say to the New Yorkers folks and to the UN folks, my community has a voice. I want to hear from my community. Okay. So now, let's go more a little in depth. When we look at theme number one, inclusive communities not leave no one behind, Talk about agency, self-reliance, talking about refugees, welcome immigration, right? Talking about drug addictions, help the issue with homeless, talking about mental health, disabilities. How can we become an inclusive community? Right? Uh, and again, this is could be us, this could be conversation on large. Thing number two, when it comes to climate change. What is our role? What can we do about this, right? Talking about resilience to disasters. I mean, look where we live. <laughs> We're prone to a disaster any minute, right? Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> how are we getting prepared for that, right? Agriculture and food security. <coughs> Health, carbon emissions reductions, lifestyles, role of consumers. What can we do to help our community, our society? In regards to safe and peaceful societies, Legacy of, I mean, this is, again, this is brainstorm ideas coming from New York. Legacy of World War II, legacy probably of Gandhi, and actually the 150th uh, anniversary of Gandhi. Women at the table, 
Safety and peaceful society, talking about terrorism, <coughs> talking about peace and security, or even safe environments, safe places in our own community. Theme four, I'm just going to leave that for the youth. Theme five, in regards to infrastructure, we talk about employment, education, training, water management. Water is a resource. There's so much interest to talk about water and the necessity of water. But also there's a great interest to talk about mountains. We need to have that agenda as well when it comes to mountains. Yes. How would add agroterrorism to the air? We're going to have a time when, when we'll open up for questions and okay. we'll take notes of all this. Okay. And that's why we're here. And the last one on theme six, um, using emerging technologies from artificial intelligence, adopting new technologies. We'll use big data. Now, as you look also on the right, additional key themes for possible inclusion, side events, lunch events, evening events. You know, it could be on mayor, cities. I know the mayor, um, she's part of the, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm talking on behalf of the city. She's part of the National Mayor's Association. U.S. Conference of Mayors. U.S. Conference of Mayors. And, uh, and I know this has been a heavy duty discussion. And to my knowledge, there's a decision to establish a side event during this conference to bring mayors, not only, yeah, possibly not only from the U.S., but also international major mayors that are working on sustainability. So not only is Mayor Basuti part of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, but she is uh, either chair or co-chair of the sustainability group within the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Mm -hmm. Great. So faith-based family. Another topic for a side event. Humanitarian work. Folks, we are not in the state of Utah for our humanitarian work. We will have a great, great component in this conference. The things that we're discussing already, it's just going to be so much fun, the things that we're talking about. Possibilities, like setting up relief efforts, building kits uh, from, from school supplies to dental hygiene kits and so forth, right there at the conference, right? I mean, and look at where we are in geographically speaking in August, during the summer. What disasters are we facing currently that we as a world society can contribute during the conference? We're gonna set up a whole area of the conference where we can actually perform some humanitarian efforts, okay? Uh, women and girls. Women is gonna take it. Big, I mean, I hope, and, and I, I, that's going to happen. I'm confident, right? Uh, when I was talking about mountains, sport for peace and sustainable development, the Olympic and Paralympics, Special Olympics, the arts will take a very important uh, toll in this. Uh, so, so you get an idea of what the conference may look like. There is going to be plenary sessions right at the beginning. Right? And then there's going to be side events and conference, you know, workshops and, and uh, conference events throughout the, the these three days. Right. So the the issue is, um, what things do you feel that we should address that we have not addressed at this point? Someone has a question. Oh, okay. And this is the time, if I recall. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the time. <laughs> 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 Yes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play with these two slides in case you have. Yes. You. Um, uh, one of the things that, um, I, and I don't know if this might fit under infrastructure or maybe using emerging technologies, but that's um, innovation. So how can we innovate to solve problems? I think um, you know it's sort of it's a it's it's a tool that can be used to solve all of these problems. So that would be the thing I would add is maybe a theme on innovation. It could be connected with emerging. Again, when I talk about questions and comments, um, I welcome anyone to, we have a phone line open for individuals to call us. We have uh, YouTube individuals. We have an email that this is why I have my laptop here. Uh, if anyone has any questions, can actually send that information to us. This event is being videotaped, not only recorded by YouTube, but also we have another camera recorded. And I have a, my wonderful colleague actually taking notes so any comments and questions that you will bring forward, we will be recording those. 
I will be generating a document that will be presented to the United Nations so we can balance things out, okay? So this is an open forum. Anything can be discussed. So, okay, we'll take turns. Felicia? Um, yeah, under theme number three for saving these small societies, maybe a topic about the use of diplomacy, um, civic engagement, uh, conversations to address tough situations. Thank you. Yes, sir. I think under theme three, You're talking about STEM as yeah. science, technology, yeah. to yeah. underserve you. Yeah. And I think there is, I believe it's six, it talks about using emerging technologies. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that falls on the youth side of it too, but uh, Could I think be. it's a big push. Uh, I think it's something really cool that we could really focus on giving STEM uh, education to youth of an underserved population. Excellent. Thank you very much. Yes, back there. Um, I have several. One is gender equity. Okay, uh, give, give us a second. So gender equity, that's one of them. And I believe uh, in, on, right? Mm -hmm. uh, under inclusive, I think gender equality, yes, that would be. Of course, human rights, across the board. You know, we celebrated the 70th anniversary of the Human Rights Declaration just a month ago. So I think that would be very valuable. Role of government in private sectors. Okay. Um, Role of government in private sectors. Poverty, yeah. Yeah, and I believe with poverty, we talked yeah, about yeah. in theme one, homeless, poverty, but we can actually add it, expand Broad, it, broad, expand broad, it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially overseas. Yeah. Um, and the last one is just use of evidence. Use of evidence. Yeah. Right. And again, this is a world conversation. Right. right. And when we talk about poverty, I mean, makes sense what we're talking about. Yes. Yes, that under, you could put it under theme two or the other one, I'm trying to remember the other other page, uh, infrastructure, agro-terrorism or infrastructure protection and crisis management, definitely. Agro-terrorism. Terrorism. Terrorism. Yeah, terrorism, I think is a good one. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably which one was the other one? Infrastructure protection and crisis management. So what are we doing to protect our infrastructures worldwide? Uh, our reservoirs, our electrical capabilities um, against uh, uh, sabotage by a terrorist. And that's a, I mean, that's a global concern. I think that really does a theme three, doesn't it? It could be, yeah, it could be mm -hmm. under both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. How can we sustain the arts? checking emails in case anyone is sending us comment or question. Yes. You sort of muttered the word music. Yes. And I think that should be an important part of it. World music uh, events and performances during the arts music, yeah. mm -hmm. that we could organize using some local people and experts mm -hmm. and to show the world that we've got it going on. Mm -hmm. there, there's one committee actually um, exclusively designed for the art. Mm -hmm. and uh, entertainment, oh, and um, uh, you know, in the organization, I believe, hold on, uh, can you see right there? I didn't see the thing you could sign up for. It's just right here. Well, make sure you let us know. Make sure you let us know. When you say, I want to be involved in the arts uh, group, and feel free to indicate that. Yes. Uh, but you know, let me share with you uh, an interesting one. I had uh, two faculty members uh, just last week uh, from the uh, arts department, actually from the dance department, they came to me with an incredible proposal. They said, I want to teach sustainability through dance. Mm -hmm. 
Bravo, right? Isn't that great? So, and of course, who are they going to target? The youth, mm -hmm. right? So, so these things are possible. We are so, we need to be very creative at this time, right? <coughs> and whatever it takes to be able to get the message across. Great, what else? One, and it's connected, obviously, to poverty, but it's this concept of financial inclusion. Okay. So um, helping people who maybe have previously been excluded from um, access to our financial system. Great. Thank you. Financial inclusion. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, maternal economy is something that's that our organization is doing a lot of thinking about. But perhaps a presentation on maternal economy and different of the economy, an exchange system, and exchange uh, financial economy, S building and elevating and uh, highlighting the strength of work that's being done through our maternal um, efforts, maternal work, an economy in and of itself. Isn't it, could it be under, I know maternal, could it be under um, women. women? And that's going to be a, a major could be component. That, or could be safe and peaceful society. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your input. Yes. One of the strengths that Utah has is its um, diverse culture and secondly, uh, an emphasis on family history. And I think when you're talking about sustaining a community, I think one of the things could be a discussion of um, the legacy. You know, how do we share our culture with the incoming generations? How do we tie in? Global? I think it's doable. I think so. Or global. Global. No, no, doable. Oh, doable. Do, do, do you think this is, this is something that bring interest to the state and to the community at large to work on family history and heritage? Legacy and heritage. Yeah. I think we could probably get some interest in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, I've been corporate representing the Church of Jesus Christ of Letters. <laughs> with the 17 goals. Mm -hmm. uh, I, okay. And of course, um, I believe goal four talks, no, four, uh, goal four is quality and education, but uh, there is a goal five that talks about well-being and health. And yeah, and so, my, so all the 17, the 16 goals, because we're looking at goal 11, which is sustainable city and community, they feed into a sustainable community. And of course, we talk about water, we talk about infrastructure, we talk about environment, we talk about uh, gender equality, we talk about some of these areas, right? And they all somehow filter into our community, right? Somehow. So I think yes, this this course can be very well taken, and uh, that uh, if, you call, if we follow this umbrella of building inclusive, yes. Yeah. What else? Yes, Carl. I have a comment. Uh, indigenous communities and the inclusiveness. This year has been not um, the dominated the year of in indigenous languages worldwide by uh, UNESCO. So, I mean, that would be a, a good thing to add on the one. We have indigenous communities here in Utah, but there's many indigenous communities around the world. Many of them are left out. So just helping them bring in and bring in their wisdom and knowledge too, as part of the wider society. I'm confident that uh, from New York, they will clap to that idea. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's mm -hmm. great. Indigenous communities. Mm -hmm. Why don't, yes. Yeah, I'm just wondering how we might include um, youngsters That is an excellent, and this is something, uh, there's an excellent question, this is something that we're working on and we'll have to be very proactive. I want to make sure that we get involved with the Utah Board of Education, that we get involved with the school districts, that we can start teaching from very early age what sustainability means and how we can become even more sustainable with our own communities, with our own home, for example, right? I mean, that conversation has to be there. 
and it has to be filtered through the board through the education channels. Right? However, we are already experiencing individuals that are coming forward with these great ideas of developing a workshop, like I said, with dance, for example. Mm -hmm. Now we're inviting uh, high school dance students to participate on this, and they're going to be learning about what sustainability is in the form of an art. Right? We're talking about model UN individuals. We're going to bring high schools to students. But I would still even would love to see educators to be involved, and maybe during the sessions to do some panels at their schools. Maybe we can work with those communities to say, hey, promote sustainability. What are you going to do uh, to educate our students? Yeah. So I think school is out of session for most schools at that time, no? No, no we've started, started already, yeah. Evan. Yeah. Yeah. We started back yeah. yeah. last weekend in August. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, I just want you to know that one of the decisions was made for this day was to make sure, and I put my foot down and says, we will not have a conference if we're not in school session or university session. Great, and also so. there are a lot of homeschool organizations in this state mm -hmm. that should be somehow approached or. You know, once we start building our financial backbone at this conference, you're gonna start seeing more media going on. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the challenges that I face is to get the word out to our community, right? Uh, we do all that we can. Um, I just want you to know, and, and Diana that works with me, Diana that works with me, uh, we have sent over, over 700 emails just in, uh, in the past week. Uh, we're looking for entities, organizations. The last thing that would bother me the most is for someone to come forward and say, well, I didn't know about this. <laughs> how, how can we get the word out, right? I mean, we're doing all we can. Uh, Tom Love with the communication, with the press conference, with the newspapers, there's quite a few articles <coughs> already there's more going to come. Of course, we still have eight more months before the end of August. So and there's gonna be a lot of activities, right? That are gonna happen throughout the community to promote this event. So believe me, the community, both uh, the private sector, the public sector, <coughs> will get involved in this. I know the legislature is planning to get involved in this. So <coughs> we just need to be, you know, we need to be the PR to our own friends, to our own communities, to our own sectors, right? To, to diffuse this information to many individuals. Yes. Well, I have a puzzle. You say you want to put the attendance number to 5,000? Did I hear you wrong? Correct. No, you're right. Okay, so <coughs> if, you tell, if you tell so many people, and I believe you will, mm -hmm. what if it becomes 6,000, 8,000, 10,000? What are you going to do? Okay, that is great. We can, right now, because of Oh, by the way, I don't know if I said this, but for all of you, you may understand that this event is free to the public. Anyone can come in. There will be two areas. One of them is what we call the Blue Zone area, and that you will have to register for the conference in order to get your accreditation to be able to enter. And the problem is that we can only have 5,000, and the reason being is because of our financial aspect. Right, if all of a sudden, if we open up registration that will take place probably the first week of February, okay? If all of a sudden by the end of February we have 20,000 people registered, it's not gonna stop, we're gonna continue. Then we may have to look around and think, okay, how are we gonna be able to handle that 20,000? So instead of having X amount of dollars for this budget, now we have to quadruple that budget. So we'll need to go out and, and seek for more funds, right? We're not going to eliminate, but we need to be realistic. Also for um, structure problems, right? I mean. It's not the same to handle a conference with 5,000 and to handle with 1,000, or to handle it with, there will be hundreds and hundreds of individuals worldwide that will be registered for this conference. I can guarantee you that because that is the common denominator for 68 editions. But you know, some of these individuals are not able to make it. Sometimes those individuals are not able to get a visa to come to the United States because they're coming from certain countries and origins where and we're working on that. That is part of our commitment to be able to facilitate that. The UN will be the one who will be sending the letter of invitation so they can present it to the respective consulates to be able to obtain the visa. Mm -hmm. But at the last conference in August, there was a lot, multiple hundreds of individuals were not able to come to the United States for this reason. So a lot of African countries, Asian countries, you know, uh, Middle East countries that want to participate and for whatever reason, political reason, which is unfortunate. They're not able to come, right? So yes, we, we have the feeling that the, the numbers will increase, but um, 
Overcoming is 5,000 attendees, not registered but, or not, uh, yeah, attendees. We want to make sure that we have 5,000 bodies going on at South House at any moment in time. Great, thank you. Yes. Is it possible that there will be preliminary events leading up to it that are kind of like a, a teaser uh, that those who might not be able to attend the conference itself might be able to, locals who can attend. You know, that's music to my ears, although my staff will kill me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. I did I did the uh, conference on October 27th just for that particular reason. I foresee that I would like to see more commitment coming from the community to develop things, kind of continue to promote this. Um, yes. We're trying to bring also individuals from the United Nations. We're bringing some ambassadors from our university and that uh, will continue this conversation. So we need to be all very present. Yes, are you, are you gonna live stream any of the presentations or, or uh, speakers or what we're present? For the conference? Yes, oh yes. A big chunk of our budget is going to be uh, for live streaming worldwide. Excellent, oh yes. There's a, we should see some of those numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Question: Your presentation, and when you send out the link, will you send us a uh, copy of this? Because I've got 51 Rotary clubs around the state that probably want to get some of this information. So I'm, I'm kind of here as a representative, but I understand. And you know what? I will be more than honored to go to the Rotary Club and present and be by your side. What if you ask me? Whatever you want me to do, okay. and I'll be there. I'll, I'm actually doing it right now with many organizations throughout the community. But I look forward to meeting with your governor, and uh, when I go to New York in March, I'll be happy to meet also with the Rotary Club in New York. So, yes, uh, Rotary Club will play a significant role in this conference. I can guarantee you that. Yes? Are you planning on printing any programs, or are you going to do it all the app, or what's your plan for that? Everything is, at this point, for the conference will be done via online. Uh -huh. There's a website. so. The moment that we start building the conference. Now think about this. First layer is, okay, this is the conference. What are we gonna talk about? Okay, that's number one. This is what we're working on. What are we going to talk about? Let's, the next layer, once we agree, both New York and <coughs> community, this is what we really need to talk about. <coughs> the question is, who is going to talk about? So then we'll be called for papers and nominations and recommendations and invitations and so forth. And those individuals will have to agree, yes, I want to present this, right? I want to do a B and C, right? Um, once we have that commitment, then we start building, you know, the structure of the conference, and that's what individuals will be able to see. Um, what was the date that we talked about? It was March 30th? No, sorry, or May, I can remember. We're looking at a date, maybe at the end of April, that we have to have everything in place, okay? And uh, so we'll at least have three strong months of promotion, okay, so people can actually see the conference, who's coming, and so forth. Um, I know that United Nations, as well as our team right here, are um, trying, well, actually, they're contacting common messengers of peace that actually participated at some previous events, uh, you know, Will Smith, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Davina Jolie, some of the big names that could, and who was, who did we talk about this morning? Oh, um, Brady. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. Right? I mean, some of these people that have actually worked with, now, with this uh, organization, <laughs> they will be part of this. Again, um, of course, we're not going to the conference. <coughs> I wonder it's going to be safe for us. But uh, maybe, you know, it will be an, an art and component, but uh, this will be uh, very exciting. There will be future technical missions. This is why you know we have two more technical missions coming from the United Nations. Uh, one of them exclusively on security. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, we're looking at the Secretary General from the United Nations in town. Uh, we're looking for, you know, we're looking at dignitaries, many governments, representatives, could be ambassadors, permanent representatives, whatever it may be the case, ministers, they will be probably be coming to town. We're already working with uh, uh, Chief of Police uh, Mike Brown in Salt Lake, uh, looking at all the structure, but from, from the technical, <coughs> from the um, logistical aspect, those technical missions will work on content, distribution, structure, you know, war out. Yes, question. Yes, so I, I'm wondering, maybe it's not finished on yet, but we have an event that we're putting together, not just for this, but for other Yeah, 
um, there is um, a link that I shared. Um, yeah, I came a little late. I missed my flight. I was supposed to be in Mexico. Oh, so. <laughs> sorry. So was that for pre presenters as well as co-chairs? Um, at this point, since we haven't built completely all the topics, uh, that would be the first layer. The next one is who is going to speak, we'll be doing. But you can always send us an email and say, hey, I'm interested in presenting. As I said last week, I had two individuals that came to me and said, I want to give a workshop on sustainability, specifically on water through the arts. Mm -hmm. said, great. So yeah, send us proposals. Communication. We will love yeah. here. And the mayor this morning told us and says, I want to make sure that our own community leads some of this conversation. So yeah. And ultimately the mayor, you know, with the UN will be making the final call on this. Yes. Well past question. So is all the requirement exact the same like um, uh, UN because I remember Philippe told me even Taiwan can come in. That is a sensitive question. So are you ready to answer or you don't want to talk uh, about it? Typically uh, <laughs> for this event, you know, I would be more than happy to develop on this. I wish I had some individuals from the UN right now could actually answer specifically that question. And uh, I'm just looking at some emails here, but uh, I'm not hearing from them, so I don't know if they are connected or not. But I will be happy to discuss this. Now, as far as registering, you need to register, quote unquote, under an NGO, right, or civil society. And uh, and at this point, if you don't have an NGO, just come and see me. All right. So because we as civil society will be able to register individuals, and we are accredited or we are associated to them. Uh, Rotary International already accredited. I mean, by by notion. Right? So yes, individuals once they register, you will get a, a confirmation letter that you will present when you come into the South Palace in August and you'll be able to get your accreditation. And that would allow you to enter into what's known as the Blue Zone. So the South Palace will be divided in two areas, Blue Zone and Open Area for anyone. So Blue Zone is primarily for those that have registered. And we do that for, well, the UN does that for security purposes, right? All the exhibits will be housed outside the Blue Zone. The big displays, the big events will take place outside, so anyone can participate on this. We will have oh, silent. Oh, that's yes. great. Yes. That's great. Okay, that's good. All right. So, you will email Philippe, or you want to? I will ask that question. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Um, back on ideas for this, under theme five, when you talking about water management, I don't see the word conservation. I think that becomes a huge issue. Um, okay. So I would add conservation, not only of water resources. And renewable energy in Utah is really uh, doing some wonderful stuff on renewable energy. As you know, Silicon Slopes Conference is coming out mm -hmm. in a few weeks, and we're already working on how are we going to let them know mm -hmm. that this is happening. That was our conversation in this uh, uh, morning session that we held. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last thoughts, questions, comments, suggestions? Yes. Yeah, need for translation. Yes, that is part. That's part of the agenda. That's part included in the uh, budget. Yes. So that if we knew the United Nations is responsible to provide translation for six different languages, uh -huh. and uh, that is uh, yeah, that's well taken care into consideration. Yes. But if we want to be fully involved in some other as a culture or something, uh, how could we also be if we're fluent in some language that's needed? It's hardly anybody knows it. How can we both be both? Or can we? Typically, all the interpretations through the conference will be professionally done. Uh, so, and again, there will be six languages based on need primarily. But um, you can just put that in your document as you apply. Just let them know, hey, I speak Spanish like I do. That's my native language, and I'll be happy to help in any way that I can. You know, one of the, I believe, one of the strengths of the state is uh, voluntary. I mean. Voluntary uh, forms, yeah. Well, well, we, we, oh, yeah, so many forms, yeah, voluntary. Uh, we, we have so many individuals that are willing to serve and help. And I echo the words of uh, Franz Kolb at the press conference that he said that uh, they actually, uh, during the Olympics, there was an ad placed in the Solid Tribune saying, we need 50,000 volunteers, right? For the Olympics, within 48 hours, they had over 45,000 volunteers that actually so we, we know that we're going to have the support from the community, from everyone. So um, it's going to be exciting. Isn't it?
going to be, as the mayor said, this is an historical event, just like that's happened with the Olympics. Right? So I think that uh, what a great opportunity that this thing is not taking place somewhere else, but here in our back there. So. Okay. Now, uh, I think we're winding down and people need to get going. I promised you that I was going to be out of here before 4.30. But for your information, I want you to know that I'm having another town hall meeting next Wednesday that you can even tap in via YouTube. And we'll be sending you the link again. I'm going to be sending all the information again to everyone. And I'm going to say, in case you missed our town hall meeting, there's a second one. And that's going to happen on Wednesday, January 16th at Utah Valley University in the uh, Fulton Library in Tempo Room, 421. Uh, can actually be called via YouTube again. Um, if you have colleagues that would be interested in participating or have a voice, we'll be talking exactly about the same things. We'll be uh, uh, getting suggestions. And uh, at this event, primarily the civil society universities will participate, but I'm opening the door to anyone that actually wants to have their voice heard, okay? So again, uh, I thank you for uh, coming forward this evening. I know that everyone has a major agenda. We make the uh, trip to come from Salt Lake to uh, things at uh, Nuggets and vice versa. And uh, by the way, I need to thank my lovely wife that she's sitting here with us for her support. And uh, and she tells me all the time, there's another email for the UN, so. No, I was just gonna say, reiterate how to get the link. Yes, uh, thank you. The link is you send me an email, a quick email, whatever you want. And again, the deadline is the 19th, that's next week. So please uh, be proactive of this. Um, Carlos, uh, what do you think about placing the link on our website? But the problem is how would you access it on our website? That's, yeah. that's a complicated task. So remember UVU, you have all the university. Remember UVUN, we made it simple for everyone. At UVU, that you're an educational institution, EDU, right? Is, I, I think that. Uh, then again, my last name is Lago. I am the sweet lake that lives in Salt Lake. Lago means lake in Spanish. <laughs> so if you Google Lago, L-H-E-O, and UVU, you, you'll have my email. If you want to contact me, feel free to do so, and I'll be happy to send you the link as well. All right? Now, we represent the Office for Global Engagement at Utah Valley University. If you even forget the link, look global, anything global at the university, it will bring you your website and you'll have all of the contact information. <coughs> okay? Again, thank you for being here today and I look forward to